Go north, gentlemen of generations. I left Missouri after my wife left me. I watched my one and only daughter graduate from high school before heading out on Interstate 45 towards the great state of Texas. And I almost didn't look back. <laughs> I, I, I was looking for answers south. My operation was the goal. My pride hanging in the balance. See, you can be a man without a country, but a man without an erection, that is not a man at all. And that is what I was hoping to get back. You see, the thing is, I never, I never wanted to go on the road. I, I always wanted to have a home and a job, but the jobs I always had always took me away from home. Ever since I was hired by the Utah Jazz to do play-by-play, -play, hippity hop across the lane, leaping leader, good if it goes, it's gone, the gentle push, the mile dark, and the cowhide globe hits home, I have not spent a single year working in one solitary spot. They bounced me around to wherever guys are playing sports. Ever since 1983, I've gone to watch the basketball games. And yes, the guys, the guys, they're, they're, they're college guys now, some of them younger than my son, dribbling a ball, trying to score that three-point shot. And, 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 and I go, and I watch them. But do I take advantage of the situation? No, no. I, I always sit shotgun, staring out the window, you know, on the way to, to Greeley, Colorado, or, or Billings, Montana, or wherever the time is right to play basketball, and I watch as the poles go by, the telephone poles, and then the trees go by, and with each one that passes, another second of my life goes down the drain. And you know what? I, 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 I don't miss it at all, you know? Uh, maybe, maybe time sees me and uh, doesn't give a damn either. Oh, my chest hurts. The Don Draper syndrome, it's not what you think it is. It's not the dashing good looks of the strong, silent type, nor is it the booze-soaked lifestyle of a Madison Avenue exec. The Don Draper syndrome is that nagging feeling in the back of your head that you need to run right now, somewhere, anywhere, and you can act on that at any point in time. When I was 16, some nights I'd come home really late, and some nights I wouldn't come home at all. And it used to piss my parents off a lot because they were great parents. And what was I to do with great parents running off into the night? You know, I take the hell that they dished out to me in the morning, but for a few precious hours, I was able to disappear completely. Ha! Fuck, fucking quack doctors. You know what they say? They say, they say that in a few years, my, my operation, it, it'll be obsolete. There'll be pills for that kind of thing, you know? I'm, I'm an overweight diabetic in his late 50s. Time doesn't want me at the party, all right? Fuck Texas, you know? I'm, I'm moving on. I'm heading out west on I-10 towards Tucson, you know? All they got out there in the Red Rocks is silence and the devil. And you know what I'm gonna do with the devil? I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna have a piece of pie with him. And I'm gonna say, devil, where the hell am I going? He says, you're gonna go to California. And like a glutton, I'll say, God damn it, devil I am. And he said, no, God don't damn you, I do. So I go on to California. And I got a son who lives up north in Frisco. I haven't talked to him in five years. Same with the one in Utah. Maybe Mexico's the better choice. Where the hell is my passport? I'm okay, okay, I, I, I'm fine. They, uh, they just kept me in the hospital to make sure that the, the, the stint in my heart is, is, is adjusting well, but I'm fine. It's a miracle, L'chaim, I'm alive. They tell me I'm going to be able to still go on to Beijing for the Olympics, it's amazing. I mean, I still can't believe it. Me and the Chinese, I mean, I love their food, but what else are we gonna talk about? Nothing, I have nothing to say to the Chinese. But it's okay, it's okay, you know why? Because I'm, I'm really excited. It's actually the first time I've ever been excited to leave home, you know? It, it's kind of got this streak going in me. I, I, I've decided to take a job, actually, in southern Utah in St. George to be the news director down there. And yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll have the same problems, you know, I'll, I'll be gone Monday through Friday and I'll have to commute five hours both ways on the weekends, but at least I'll be in the same state, at least I'll get to come home on the weekends, see my family, see my wife, my kids, my dogs, you know, all the important stuff. Those desert drives, they'll, they'll give me a chance to think. I'll, I'll, I'll have all this time to myself, it'll be great. Maybe I can read those books on tape that my son's always talking about. Let's see, we're really gonna do this. Park, reverse, drive.
So they, 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 hired, they hired a teenager to teach a college class over the weekend, me. I, I got hired at Southern Utah University for a weekend to teach a class on improv comedy. I mean, I'm a teenager. What do I know about improv comedy? I think I'm funny, but I tell fart jokes. I don't have a degree in it. I don't have a master's in it. But you know what? I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it by myself. I'm going to drive down five hours from Salt Lake down to Cedar City, and I'm going to do it alone in my truck. And who knows what I'll find. Maybe, maybe I'll get in, in adventures with, like, roadside passengers, you know, trying to bum a ride. Or, or maybe, maybe I'll find passion in a hot diner waitress whose lips are the cherries in my pie. Mmm. <laughs> Extra whipped cream. And it's amazing, because once I get out on the road, I, I see it. I see the desert, and it really does go on forever. If I ever go homeless, if I ever lose everything, I'm setting up camp in the pits of Goblin Valley. Pit stop. Goddamn fucking shit car! <sighs> Broke down in the middle of Mexico, where there's, there's nothing, there's nobody around. It wouldn't even help if I could, if I could speak the language because there's nobody here, no signs of life. The, the, the boil down point is that, that I'm, I'm tired and I'm lost and I'm alone and all I've got are my thoughts to keep me company, nothing else. Shit. This means that I, that I gotta go up to Phoenix with the rest of my graduating class and set up camp to die. And all I got is my memories to keep me company on the way up. On the way up through Mexico, all I got is the one pocket in my mind, and that pocket has a hole. God, I wonder if I'm in somebody else's memory. Slipping and sloshing, falling out the back of their heads, tumbling down their napes till I go on the gravel. I guess I'll go north. I'll think about life and I'll go north. Think and go north. So guess what? The job, oh yeah, it was a bust. It's gone. Six months later, cut the whole thing. They said they were letting me go because the whole station was going under. And I've been through this thing enough times before to know that once they tell you it's over, you just get out. They handed me my last paycheck. I jumped in the car, headed north on I-80, and I wasn't going to stop for anything except for gas and rest. So I filled up at a rest stop, but for some reason, I, I, I couldn't find peace of mind. So you, you know where I drove? I went to Mountain Meadows, site of the infamous 19th century massacre. I've, I've been to Laramie, Wyoming. I've seen where they tied up the shepherd boy. I, I've been to ghost towns and stayed where Jesse James' spirit is buried, if not his body. I've walked in the Eden that is east of Steinbeck's mind, but I've never felt so alone as I did in Mountain Meadows. And that's because after about 20 minutes of watching the spring breeze push de desert scrub brush along the sand, I got back in my car and my gas tank was on empty. I had just filled it up a half hour prior. And it's, it's a sign. I know it's a sign. It's a sign that I, I'm destined to go back on the road. <laughs> I told myself I wasn't going to do this. You know, you know my, my father, he abandoned our family for the last nine years of his life roaming around. And I said I wasn't going to do that. But guess what? I'm going to have to do that. <sighs> they'll, they'll call me. I'll, I'll go home for a little bit. And they'll call me. And they'll say, go north. And, and leave your family. Go north and leave home. The class was a success. I am so sad to be leaving Southern Utah. It totally makes up for the rest of the state. I, I'm really sad to be leaving. And as I pull onto I-80 to go home, I realize I have a choice. I have no cell phone. I've got little money in my pocket, but I'll get more once I start working. And most of all, I've got a head start. It'll be a whole day before anybody knows where I've gone, where they have any inclination of where I might be. 
I'm going to head south to Arizona, land of life and warmth. My grandfather's buried out there, and I never got to meet him. So I hit my blinker. I get on I-80, and I go south for about five minutes before I flip a U-turn and go north, going north and going home. Shake Arky. If you missed it the first time, you can see Jake Arkey's